What's going on guys? Tropical Fish Guy here. Today I'd like to share with you a new shipment of fish that I got. Three different species of fish that I think are a great community aquarium fish that's suitable for a wide range of different community fish. So if you've got tetras, mollies, platies, quarries, that kind of thing like I do, I'll show you what I got right now and these fish would be excellent companions for most community fish and I'll talk more about it as I unbox this. All right, so this company is called Aquahuna. They've got uh, really, their last shipment of fish was really good. Look at that, what do we have here? We've got, these are white cloud minnows. White cloud minnows are really good community fish. They move fast up on the top of the water let's see i've got a couple in here right there yeah those two guys right there they're schooling fish so they do hang out together so these guys need a couple more friends so it looks like i've got i've got about 13 12 13 but these guys have a horizontal stripe that goes through their bodies they've got the red tips of their fins great uh, community fish. They don't bother anybody. They, they're good feeders. They're easy to feed. They eat just about anything. They do like a little bit cooler water, but overall, but you know, leave, uh, saying, having said that, my water's about 75 degrees, 74, 75, something like that. But having said that, these guys are really nice. They, they move all the time. If you like an active tank, really nice, beautiful, beautiful fish. I mean, look at that. They are really, really nice looking fish. So we're going to put these in here. So the first step in acclimating the fish is leave the bag floating for 15 minutes so that the temperature of the water in the bag gets the same as the temperature of your fish tank because you don't want to shock the fish and put them in differing temperatures of water. All right, so those are the white clouds. Let's see what else we got. And one thing to point out is that Aquahuna, uh, so far I've got good fish from them, but if you don't, they guarantee live arrival, not only the day that you get them, but we, they honor this guarantee for the first three days after arriving at your home. That is awesome, very awesome guarantee. I love that, that's really cool. So you can feel safe getting the fish and their, their prices even with shipping are lower than my fish store prices so that's pretty cool all right now i don't follow the exact rules of of their acclimation process because i don't want to pour their fish water into mine but i would suggest perhaps that you follow their acclimation process all right what we got here oh hold on a second so first things first I'm actually going to, I didn't notice until I saw that bag, but these are double bags, so I'm going to open this bag up here. All right, that's better. See these cool looking, they all look alive and healthy. That's what you want to see even after being in a, in a dark bag in a box for three days. Let's see, I ordered them ordered them Sunday I think and now it's Wednesday so that got here faster than I was expecting look at that that's what you want to see some lively lively fish and of course in the bag they're gonna be very stressed they're gonna be light in color they're gonna be pale but they're going to color up very nicely these fish are really really good hardy fish very easy to take care of, like I said before, and I think I ordered, I don't know, man, well, there's about 12 of them in there maybe. Well, let's look at the other fish. We got the Neon Tetra. All right, I ordered like 12 or 15 of those in there too. The Neon Tetra, a great, great staple of, a, of aquarium fish. Uh, these fish are probably, if I'm correct, the most popular fish in the aquarium hobby because they're so nice looking look at that i mean that that little few there they need some friends so that's why i ordered these guys very blue stripe on the top 
red stripe on the bottom that half red stripe look at that that is so cool I mean they're very pretty fish fairly easy to take care of great with the other other uh, community fish they don't bother anybody safe with shrimp as you can see I've got maybe as you can't see but I've got a bunch of shrimp hidden in there you know there 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 those two guys they are shrimp see so got some amanos in there got some shrimp on this side there they're hiding in the moss there's about four of them in there as you can see uh, those are the same two but uh, yeah neon tetras they do need to be in schools they also prefer some soft water but my pH is around seven five maybe and they do they do just wonderfully so these guys need some friends I I got three from the pet store that's all they had so I knew I was gonna order some more but very good community fish they eat anything as well flake food pellets micro pellets I'll leave a list of foods that I feed them very nice looking fish as you can see in the bag there's no dead ones very active wanting to get on out very cool okay in this next one I guess that maybe a lot of fish keepers don't have these but these are these are scissor tail rainbow fish and I ordered six of those scissor tail rainbow fish and they don't look like much in this bag here but when they get bigger and I'll put a picture of what they look like but when they get bigger and these are nice and healthy uh, let's see there are six of them in there they move fast they're very active they're always visible very pretty pretty fish as well so they do they do get prettier as they get older and they just got the the fork the fork tail actually they're not called scissor tail they're called fork tail rainbow fish okay fork tail sorry my bad now that i remember but very very pretty and they get along with shrimp there's a nice red cherry shrimp right there he's pretty cool looking you know, all the white clouds peacock gudgeon he's really nice black skirt tetras glow light tetras there's a nice little school right there got some serpe tetras i need to get some more of those i got uh, three or four of those in there they need schools of six or more uh, for a 20 gallon long this is a 20 gallon long cory doris cats there's some julia cories julie cories whatever you want to call them got a bristle nose plate going there got some amano shrimp got some guppies hiding in there somewhere yeah there's some guppies hiding in there somewhere got a really pretty one here too oh got some babies see the baby uh cool huh oh yeah this dude right there he's really nice he's really pretty so new additions to the 20 long fish tank got a lot of plants in there for them to hide they do you know uh tetras the neons white clouds you know the uh, and the, the rainbow fish and, and most fish i would say prefer live plants but if you can't do live plants get fake plants maybe some rocks and make plenty of places for them to hide and feel safe and secure that would be the key so i'm going to let these sit for 15 minutes and then what they suggest is slit a hole in the bag put the tank cover on let it soak in for 15 minutes or so and then do it again so that the water mixes in so that they get used to your aquarium water so it doesn't shock them because water is different from every place from especially across you know way across the country i think these are from washington okay washington so definitely and they they only sell these in groups which is really good but like i said they're they're fairly inexpensive all right so we're gonna let them sit in there for 15 minutes and then i'm not gonna cut them open and let the tank water mix or anything what i'm going to do is i'm going to put them in a separate container you can use a plastic tupperware bowl that's probably what i use I've, I've got a a pitcher i've got a pitcher here so each one each bag goes into a different one because they're different i would imagine different levels of ammonia and stuff and if you mix all the water from each bag then it might uh, stress them out a little bit maybe not maybe it's all the same water but the way i do it is i put them each in separate containers in that water in here and then um well i'll show you here as i do it but first let them sit get temperature acclimated for 15 minutes i'll be right back 
All right, so 15 minutes later, I'm going to uh, take these bags here. Here, I'm going to slit them open. So I'm going to cut them open and pour some into these containers here. Um, let's see, one, two, three. Why do I have four? Oh, I'm drinking that one. I'm not going to pour it into that one. So this one might be a little too small, but these two are okay. Let's go ahead and start with the one that has the least amount of water. Let's see here. Looks like the neons. And they're starting to color up already. Look at that. Isn't that nice? So I'm going to cut this bag open and stick them in this. I don't know if that'll fit, but uh, we'll try. Look at them. They look nice, huh? So this does hold a lot of water. So I'm going to pour just a little bit out. All right, so I just poured a little bit out. There's about, it's about half full, half empty, depending on your point of view, right? So the first thing is I'm gonna pour about, let's see, the water line's about right there. I'm gonna pour about halfway up to about here, and then the next 15 minutes, I'm gonna pour about up here. So I'm gonna do it twice. I'm gonna take, well first, I'm going to open this bag up here in this container. So it's more like it there. A lot more room to pour water in. These are the white cloud minnows. White cloud minnows. Same kind of thing. At first I'm going to pour just a little bit. Probably I would say half that volume. So about that much. Then the next time that much. So this ball jar actually has some good lines here. So first time I'm pour that right there, then I'm gonna pour that right there. Then I'm gonna net them out. I'm gonna pour them into a net and then dump them into the tank. Let's get this one out here. Same thing, I'm gonna just cut the bag open and pour them into that thing. All right, look at those guys. Can you see them? Those guys look good. These guys here, they're really cool. They've got blue eyes. You can see them there. That's really neat. They will color up to a bright yellow. I've got six of those. Very nice, beautiful fish. So the first go around, pour about that much, then the second go around that much. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. I've got my little cup here. Pour some water into the, from the tank. I'm gonna pour some in here just so that they get used to it. Okay, pour some in here. Pour some in here. Okay, so I'm gonna do the, wait 15 minutes and do it again. So let's let them acclimate for about 15 more minutes. All right, the timer's going, 15 minutes, and these guys are already starting one to swim. I love their blue eyes, that is so cool do color up more as they get adults. These guys here, all that stuff right there, it's on the outside, not on the inside, so it's all good. Make sure you get a clean jar. Those are cool looking there. They are doing quite well. I love the quality of these fish. Neons, they are doing very well as well. See all that junk at the bottom? I don't want to pour that into my tank. That's why I'm doing it this way, but you know, if you uh, are comfortable with doing that, which I wouldn't suggest, but that's what they suggest from the uh, shipper, so you would probably want to do that if you wanted to take advantage of their life guarantee. One other thing I'd point out is that normally a lot of people, they just skip this step, they float the bag, and then they just pour it into the tank after 15 minutes, which I used to do a lot, and it turned out fine most of the time, but sometimes they get stressed out if you have completely different water from your tank uh, from the actual uh, farm. So, you know, you do want to, if you have the time, you do want to slowly acclimate them like we're doing here or like the farm suggests. But once again, while we're waiting for that 15 minutes is probably you guys are thinking, well, why don't you put them in a quarantine tank first? And that is a very fair question. If they do get sick, I uh, will be able to hopefully treat the entire tank since it is only 20 gallon. I do have a quarantine tank getting set up right now, which yes, I do recommend first when you get new fish, putting them into a quarantine tank and I'll have a video out 
on how to set up a quarantine tank and why it's important. But basically, if they have diseases, then you do want to put them in the quarantine tank for like a month. I do pre-treat the quarantine tank once it's set up. Uh, once it's cycled and everything, but yeah, you are taking a risk if you if you put them directly into your display tank So yes, that is something that I would recommend doing and I will be doing from now on the quarantine tank because I did have uh, Some guppies come in with diseases and I had to treat the 29 gallon so the 30 gallon tank and I, I'll do uh, they hadn't camel anus worms So I'll do a video on that. So if you've got a bigger tank, you know uh, like a 30 gallon then be using a lot more medicine than if you were using a 10 gallon tank same with the 20 so take that into consideration completely uh, yes if you say oh man you should put them in quarantine tank yes i should but don't have it ready yet uh you could use you know, some people use quick quarantine uh, tank that uh but i prefer that the quarantine tank is set up and cycled already anyway that's why i'm doing it not advisable sure but if for some reason that these guys do get sick or get the other fish sick, uh, it's just a 20, so I could, I've got the medicine available, a wide range of medicines. I'll go through a, over that in, in another video, but fully agree. But I'm doing it this way today, so please bear with me. Also, I do understand that a lot of people only have one tank. They don't have a quarantine tank and it's kind of unfeasible to set up an extra tank just for quarantine. You can do a temporary hospital tank, but that's not exactly the same depending on who you talk to. So if you got a small tank, then, you know, that's the only thing that we can do. I mean, we don't have fish rooms and stuff like that. I do have uh, multiple tanks. If you got multiple tanks, then yes, I agree. Do the quarantine uh, for sure. You know, there's always exceptions. It's best practices to have a quarantine tank. But like I said, if you only have one tank, um, if you've got a one small tank, then I would say not fully best practice, but we do what we can do, right? And, you know, and just live with it. But have some medicines uh, available. I'll put a link in the description below of all the medicines that I use. And I do, I do treat the, the incoming fish proactively. And I did a video on that but the reason for that is yes you will assume that something's on them something's in them uh, so I use three medicines I use the either general cure or paracleanse the same thing same ingredients I use the Maricin and I use the ICX so we're gonna be doing that as well you know different ways to do it the best practice way is just to use the quarantine tank but you know sometimes we don't and sometimes we pay for it, but uh, sometimes we can't feasibly if we have, if we're just a fish keeper with a 10 gallon tank or whatever, right? That's how I started. That's how most, a lot of people start. Uh, so there you go. Whatever I say, you know, uh, make up your own decision and do what's best for your situation. All right, timer went, just went off. I'm gonna go ahead and pour a little bit more to those jars. Let's see here. Same kind of thing. I don't scoop any fish in. And you can do this more than twice, but they recommend at least twice. So that one's full. That one, do we have, we need to fill that up a little bit more. And that one, we'll fill up a little more. So at the end of the day, we filled this with about the same equal uh, volume of water as what was in the bag, so it, it's double. And you can do more and more, uh, depending on the time you have. Same thing there. They're doing just great. Oh man, I just can't get over their blue eyes. They're awesome. Look at that. You can see it even through the picture. Look at that. That's cool. White Cloud's doing good. Neon's doing great. All right, so let's wait 15 more minutes and then I'll pour them into the tank. All right, another 15 minutes have passed. These fish are doing great. As you can see, they're swimming all throughout the container up, down, all throughout the level. They're, they're really acting very healthy. So let's go ahead and net these out. I've got my bucket in my net. I'm gonna start off with the white clouds. Let's pour these in the net.
sure they're all out of there. Yep. All right, take these. Let's put them in here. Yeah. Join your friends. Join your friends. There they are. What do you think? Yeah. There they are. They're like, what's going on here? They need to be fed too, but I'll wait a day before I feed anything. Put the medicine in there. The preventative. Look at that. Okay. Very cool. Soon they will be schooling with those other white clouds. Aren't they pretty? They are so pretty. White clouds. Look how shiny they are. Huh? Shiny gold stripe. That red fan. These guys here. Yeah. These guys here. They're going to color up nicely. Yeah. Yeah. There they go. All right. All right. Let's do the rest of them. Let's do the rainbow fish. Rainbow fish are really active in here. Yeah, those are hard, a fast swimmer, so make sure you get them all in the net. And they jump too, so let's put those in there. Boop, boop, boop. All right. Those guys, huh? Those guys. They're going to color up nice when they're bigger. That one has some finage problems, so he might have been nipped on, perhaps, in the bag. But in any case, I'm going to treat this tank. Let's see. But first, let's get the other fish. Okay, the neons. Neons. Probably one of my favorite fish because they're so cheap and pretty and easy. Yeah. Look at that. Come on. Don't freak on me. Don't freak on me. Don't freak on me. All right. Yeah. Like, what's going on, guys? Yeah, so we got some friends. You can tell the new ones. They're really pale, but they don't stay that way. Oh, look at that school. Isn't that nice? Oh, my goodness. That looks good. All right. Look at that, huh? That's a nice addition to the tank. Oh, look at the rainbow fish up there. He is really nice looking. They are nice. Yeah, the rainbow fish kind of hang out at the top. They do swim. Oh, this one's going to have really nice color here. Oh, you can see the yellow starting to, starting to come through. The neon swim throughout the whole entire water column. There's the minnows. Some minnows there, they swim out through the water column. Of course, the neons. We all know and like the neons. Look at that, what do you guys think? And I'll show you some more when they get colored up too. I'll do a tank update or something. All right guys, so there you have it. Uh, adding the new fish. They make a great addition, forktail rainbows. They're gonna be awesome looking. Of course, neons are wonderful. Aquarium staple. Definitely can't have too many of those. I mean, I'd love to have this whole thing full of neons. Maybe one day. And the white clouds, very active, pretty fish. So let me know what you guys think. What's your favorite freshwater fish? Or what's your favorite fish in general? It doesn't matter. It could be saltwater, who cares? Give me a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. It helps out a lot. I really appreciate you guys watching so much. Thank you so much. I, I never tell you guys enough, but thank you so much for watching. And happy fish keeping. Peace.